Hi, time for a quick tear down of this Fluke 287 True RMS Digital Multimeter that I scored um, on eBay. I was hoping it would be faulty, and I'll link into a second channel video up here and down below if you haven't seen it. And well, yeah, it's not faulty. It works just fine and dandy. So let's take this thing apart because I've never taken apart a uh, Fluke 280 series before. We've got the infrared uh, window down here, haven't uh, tested that. And it's your traditional over molded uh, design like this. I'm not a fan of the tilting bayer when I first got it and I first started to use it um it just it just fell off is that normal I don't know <laughs> they've just got uh looks like just these little um knobbly things here and then the uh, and the tilting bayer just sits in there like that but that just easily comes off I don't like that at all so I'm not not impressed by that have I just got a dodgy one don't know. Anyway, the back of it, all they've got is uh, two hooks up here and they and just the one uh, one of these um, you know battery thumb screw things down here. And we'll lift this off and there you go. There's our battery uh, pack in it. Uh, six AA uh, cells. I did actually uh, bend uh, one of these contacts here when I actually uh, first took it off. Now, interestingly, they got three terminals in here. I'm not sure what that's. Four, I, I would maybe for a rechargeable pack solution, maybe, but then how do you charge it? I'm not sure, like, because the extra terminal would you know, often be like a temperature thing or something. Anyway, we've got our two uh, HRC fuses there. They're easily replaceable. So looks like we've got uh, two, four, six screws holding this bad boy in. So let's take it apart. Yeah, we may have to void the warranty. We'll just slice that off, shall we? Unfortunately, the comically long screwdriver doesn't fit. Oh, bummer. Gonna have to get a different size. So will this have like an MSP430 processor like uh, the other Flukes do? Because Flukes transitioned over to the 430 a few decades ago. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, but I, I don't know. Or do they need something beefier to do the big graphical uh, display? One thing I am disappointed about with the... Um, they do have the trend thing in this. Uh -huh. Time and date need to be reset. Um, so, yeah, I believe this has a super cap in it. Um, so that might... I don't know. That might be... Uh, might need replacing because the batteries were out while I was just shooting this intro here. But wasn't for that long, but anyway. Okay, one thing I wanted to show you here is let's just go into uh, record mode here, okay? And we can record like this. So I've got to set for one second uh, recording here. And if we start that, okay, it's going to sample once every second. And there it goes, two, three, four. And um, this thing, of course, famously has uh, the graph trend plot or whatever it is uh, they call it. But I don't believe you can actually do it. I haven't RTFM, RTFM'd, but I don't believe you can actually do it until you actually go, until you stop it, and then you can go trend. Like that. Um, I, like, why? Uh, is there some firmware upgrade that allows you to do it live? But anyway, I find that really annoying. Anyway, I would consider that a bit of a uh, fail, really. They go to effort to have the nice trend plot capability, then you can't do it live. Like, that's just ridiculous. Come on. Seriously? That's our last self-tapper there. So let's get the... Can we get it apart? Is it just going to... It's going to do it without a fight. Or are they clips? Uh, there could be something up the top here. I sense a great disturbance in the force up the top. No, there we go. Got a spudger in there. And we're in. Whoa, look at that. There you go. Nice plastic work there. I rather like that. And those integral uh, battery contacts there. They're beautiful. So, yeah, very happy with that. And inside, we're immediately presented with this uh, nice big shielded plastic here. This will be a conductive pr plastic. I'll prove that to you. Get the baby fluke jobby here. And there you go. There you go. 50 ohms, 40 ohms. Yeah. So, conductive plastic. So let's get that off, and another self-tapper. There you go, we are in. Beautiful. All right, look at that. Wow. And immediately, let's go straight down. I can't read this on the bloody camcorder screen. And yep, that is indeed an MSP430. So there you go. Um, and of course, uh, the uh, graphics uh, processing, it's not actually doing all the graphics processing. It's probably like, a, that looks like a serial interface over there, buggering off, is it? Anyway, um, there's our hybrid resistor network there. We've got another 
uh, ceramic resistor uh, network there. That's the, just the high voltage uh, input resistor there. Of course, this is Cat4, 600 volts, Cat3, 1,000 volts. So it's going to have pretty decent input uh, protection and spacing and everything else. And we see that here. We've got the isolation slots all around here. We've got our uh, fusible input resistor here. We've got a uh, PTC. We've got three MOVs. They're not huge, but there's there's three MOVs there. Um, there's our 10 amp uh, current shunt. And I'm not seeing the uh, diode bridge for the uh, fuse protection. Usually you have one of those. Could be on the other side. There's another uh, PTC up here that's missing. So that's interesting. But anyway, um, there you go. And they've got a uh, just an isolation slot under the uh, input resistor uh, divider there. Very nice. And a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff. And there's our little super cap over there. Is that a super cap or a battery? I've been told it's a C. Yes, it's C. It's got C145. So that's actually a, they're using that as a uh, super cap there. And there's our buzzer. Um, and there's a couple of unpopulated footprints up here. What's an Enet 1 and an Enet 2? Does anyone know? Is this a, like some sort of expansion model thing? I don't know what the 289. Uh, I don't know the exact difference offhand between 287 and the uh, 289. Nine, but anyway, uh, that's interesting. And there you go. Uh, we're going to have the uh, transmit and receive LEDs there because I think you can do uh, it's you know, bi directional. You can uh, set calibration and do stuff. Got our large pads for the battery and whatever uh, that extra uh, terminal there is. Not going to go through and reverse engineer everything. There's no point in that. Some nice golden uh, guard traces there. If I get them at the right angle, they'll be nice and shiny. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so they're guard uh, traces to stop any uh, uh, leakage on the board. Very nice. And, of course, the rotary switch down here, that looks pretty schmick. This looks uh, very different, doesn't it? Um, I, I don't know, I rather like that. Anyway, is that uh, dual wipe contacts down in there? It looks like it possibly is, but we can get the uh, we can get the board out. And of course you can view this in, I'm, I'm shooting this in 4K resolution. So we can actually do this. Like I could put this under the Tagano microscope, but um, you know, and then we could go around. But unfortunately the Tagano microscope's only 1080p. It's not uh, 4K, so. Yeah, if you want 4K, I've got to actually shoot high-res photos and then uh, do my talking head screen capture. I find it interesting how the side of the case is actually uh, transparent. It's actually a transparent plastic that they've put the rubber over mold over that. So that's rather interesting. And I really like the look of these input jacks here. They look pretty schmick. So I'm going to have to get those out, I believe, to take the board out. But very nice. Spared no expense. Really spectacular. Spared no expense. All right, so let's flip this board out. That just comes out. There was just one screw there, which was the same as all the other self-tapping screws. Ah, uh, check it out. No, 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 no. We have another processor over here. Anyway, oh, I like how the rotary switch is like, oh, wow, you know, that is different. That is different to other flukes, isn't it? That's really rather groovy how they've implemented that. I really like it. Um, it's like a two-sided thing and there must have been a screw access from the other side which I couldn't see deep down in there. So you could take that off. I'm not actually going to take that apart but that looks pretty schmick. So anyway, I was talking about the diode bridge before. Yeah, there it is. It's on the bottom. Um, I've done a video on M multimeter input protection so I can link that in. But no, look, look, we have a freescale processor down here. So the MSP430 was just doing the, they were leveraging the MSP430 uh, tech, which they have on their existing multimeters for f just doing the multimeter functionality. And then all the graphics and all the um, data logging and all the whatnots uh, is done by this. I can't see it here. You know, I can't see that on the screen here. I'll put it up here. And uh, then looks like we have uh, two memory devices and is that our flash chip? So that's that's pretty grunty, isn't it? This thing does have 100 hours battery life, nominal, uh, and actually 200 hours in logging mode. So I presume, you know, because it samples slower uh, than in regular multimeter mode, it chews le like half the power. So anyway, that's interesting, is it not? So this is a Rev 15. Uh, that, is that the reference? Is that our reference? 
I suspect that could be our reference. Just looking at that, it looks pretty important. Um, perhaps. Got another analog devices jobby there. I can't read that on the camcorder screen. There's another conductive plate, so that's sandwiched between there. And look at this. Look at the key. <laughs> look at that for the uh, keypad thing. It's like a waterproof thing with like a whole plastic, clear plastic enclosure there, isn't it? Why have they gone for clear? Does anyone know? Leave it in the comments if you've got any idea. Anyway, there's the uh, LCD there. You can actually buy a uh, replacement uh, LC like screens and whatnot for these, but uh, geez, that's that's really nice. I, yeah, uh, there's our infrared uh, transmit and uh, receiver there. So, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna take some high-res photos. As always, available on evblog.com via my Flickr account. So yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed with the construction of this thing. And what is it, like a 20-year-old design or something like that? Just everything about this um, screams uh, quality, spared no expense. And like, look at all the uh, shield in here. And then we've got the... Does that... No, that's all... Okay, so that's all part of the case there. So the rubber baby buggy bumper keys there, um, they're just on the front there against the, uh, like, transparent, um, front case on that. It'd be cool if they actually did a transparent version, because, uh, they did release a transparent case version of the, uh, Fluke 87 at one point. But anyway, um, there's our switch, uh, range switch, uh, down there. That's your classic implementation of your, uh, Fluke switch. Um, it's like, a lot of people copy that too. So, yeah, it's what works a treat. I really do like the implementation of the, uh, the actual mechanism itself there. That's, that is really quite... Nice, and uh, yeah, I think there might be a, I can't see down in there, but I guess there's a screen, put a tiny screwdriver down there, and you can take that off, can you? But I'm not going to, sorry. Anyway, you can see all the rest of it around here. What are these? I can't read them, but I'd be guessing, uh, you know, 405 ones, um, something like that, perhaps. Uh, some 4000 series uh, muxy type stuff happening. See, you guys have the advantage of being able to watch this on your big screen monitors uh, and, you know, in the glorious 4Ks and I'm, like, watching on this little piddly two and a half inch, three inch uh, camcorder screen. <laughs> Can't see diddly squat. And we've got a little plastic uh, sheet there so that uh, it doesn't, so that the rain switch up here doesn't rub. So that's nice attention to detail. So going to put that all back together. That's really groovy. That is really quite nice. This uh, meter, worth every cent from a uh, design and build quality point of view, that's for sure. Though I'm surprised that they don't have any Loctite on the screws holding in the connectors. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like to see some Loctite on there, pretty please. But I guess it hasn't been a problem for them. I don't know, leave it in the comments down below, but there you go. Beautiful. And just a quick one, we do actually have the schematic here. It's not for the uh, 280 series, but it is for the 189 series 2, which this one uh, came from. They just uh, discontinued the 189. It became the uh, 287, 289, basically. So I do believe it's pretty identical. So um, yeah, let's actually just have a very brief look. Here's our uh, front end here, of course. So here's our, uh, like, there's our current shunter, 10 amp current shunter down there. I've done videos on uh, front ends like this. There's our diode uh, bridge protection. Got some extra clamp in here. Looks like LM4141 is our uh, reference there and then you just calibrate it uh, out so it's all about the uh, Temco um, stuff. And then they've got that milliamp jack uh, sense in here and here's our input jack here. Here's our uh, fusible resistor. We've got our high voltage resistor here. We've got our uh, PTC here and then we've got three MOVs there like that uh, in your classic arrangement and you know You've got range switch stuff happening up here. Looks like they got some uh, Zener uh, clamping there. That's interesting. Got some more clamping action happening here. And here's your main uh, Fluke chipset, which you saw next to that uh, hybrid uh, divider network, which is actually here. That's all, that's uh, Z2 there. So those resistors are all uh, thermally matched in the uh, ceramic hybrid. That's why they put them on the uh, ceramic there. And it looks like they use an LTC 1968 uh, for the true RMS uh, output there. That's got 100 kilohertz, uh, well, the meter has 100 kilohertz bandwidth. Um, yeah, there, there's some 4053s, which I noted before. And there's our MSP. Uh, 
our 430 processor. So they're just using it like as a regular fluke multimeter. They're treating it as a regular fluke multimeter and they basically bolted on uh, the bigger badass uh, processor on there to drive the LCD and do the uh, data logging and uh, the whatnot. So, you know, there's some uh, more 4053 action. That's the, the ADG714 uh, marks that was on uh, the bottom side of the board. And this is uh, decoding the range switch here. So they actually do that using uh, voltage. So they have a little crude ADC there and they can measure the, uh, the value and know which range switch position they're in there. And here's the main processor and it's an MC9328. Uh, and we've got the extra memory over here and we've got the ROM here. And well, that's about all she wrote. There's a for development header down there. And um, yeah, they actually, um, those expansion things, that's an ethernet, ethernet connector, ethernet interface for development. Um, I, okay, <laughs> made development easier, but uh, yeah, it wasn't used for anything else. Then you've just got all your fancy pantsy power supply stuff and uh, Bob's your uncle. Oh, LCD drive down here, uh, classic arrangement, giving you the different levels um, for the, using LM32, well, LP324 is low power, not that high power um, LM rubbish um, for the uh, LCD there. So there you go, quick tear down of the Fluke 287. If you liked that as much as I did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss uh, down below and over on the EV blog of forum, of course, where all the test equipment nerds hang out. Catch you next time. And just a pro tip, when you're putting screws back into uh, plastic cases like this, what you do is don't just put it in, don't just whack the screw in and then start screwing because you can strip the thing. What you do is you just turn it backwards like this until you can feel it drop into the existing thread and then screw it into the existing thread because you don't want to cut a new one. Turn it back, turn it, oh yeah, there we go, got lucky, and that just screws in real easy peasy, lemon squeezy.